East Asian wedged coil is a compilation of techniques that have been discovered by individual potters and shared from potter to potter, village to village, culture to culture, down through time. This technique is called wedged coil because the new clay is literally wedged into the wall. And as the new coil is added, it's added on the inner edge of the rim and then thrown down and compressed into the wall. The clay of the wall is displaced and the outside hand moves upward, creating a shear move that compresses and aligns the particles in line with the form. A squeeze of clay clawed off. Place it on the knuckles. See these high points of the bones here? Parallel with the floor, relaxed hand. You're going to place the coil on the high points of your bones. The other hand on top. You're going to use those bones to do the throwing. It's the movement across those knuckles that are creating high points that on the return move is, are going to be dispelled. Okay, When you've reached the point, you're going to turn it over and start again. Now, if it's not getting skinnier, you're not applying pressure when the clay crosses your knuckles. Does it ever come was past your knuckle? You want it to, when your hands are together, the coil should be over the knuckles. Right. It, Okay, I'm going to freeze here. Do you see this hand position? That's as far as I'm going to go. Coming back together, notice the coil is over my knuckles. And away again. If you get a thin spot on the coil, your hands have thrown the same point on the coil more than once. So you didn't point your fingers to the ceiling to move up the coil. The pressure is not this way. The pressure is this way. Do a little bit of hand wedging. And now, let me show you this hand position. Notice this comfortable, relaxed hand. And notice this low point created by the muscle of the thumb, base of the thumb and the palm of the hand. That gives us a natural turn the corner spot. The bone on my top hand the bone at the base of the thumb, is going to be the high point that has the strength to throw the clay. So I'm going to use that bone to move into that low point in the other hand. So I reach out parallel fingertips and pull back towards that low point under the thumb muscle. There's the first strike. Notice that in that strike, a high point is created here. And I've begun to move the clay. I'll show you also that there's a flatness happening here as the clay begins to turn the corner. So I'm going to pick up that clay and turn it so that the high point from this flat is now against the base of the thumb. So the high point of the previous move has to go into that point. You can see the wall is becoming more the thickness of the coil. Now I've pretty much completed this move and this floor is now a nice curve and it's fairly equal thickness. So make sure that this thickness is equal to the coils that you're going to be adding. But we also need to consider how the pot will sit on the table. I'm going to show you how to make a mound of sand between these two pieces of fabric that will then create the foot and give the support needed while the clay is soft. Begin by making a little pyramid of sand in the center of the mound. Now we need this support to be the correct diameter for the foot statement of the pot. The sand comes out in a bit of a pyramid, and this is a little too sharp. So I'm going to just tap the tool on the table. 
by giving it a couple taps, it rounds out. This diameter of the sand must reach the inside dimensions of the diameter of the foot. Now I'm going to cover the mound with another piece of fabric so that the sand doesn't stick to the clay and cause problems. We're going to find the high point of the mound of the sand and the high point of the floor of the pot. And those two points will come together. My thumbs need to be directly over the foot statement. As you set that down, just tap it down gently onto the mound of sand. As I create the foot statement, now lift the first coil of the wall. As you can see, the foot statement is beginning to form on the outside of the pot. In order to keep that foot statement nice and strong, you need to seal the inside edge, any high points. Compress and align the clay. Okay, And then seal the foot in that new position. Seal the clay in the new position. As the fingertips move the clay, together and up, the thumb receives and seals. Don't pinch. At the end of the first move, there's a subtle high point. Each move begins on the crest of the high point of the previous move. Your fingertips are apart and then moving together. The fingertips are moving, the thumb is just receiving and sealing, holding stable. We have taken and created the first coil of the wall from the clay of the floor, and we no longer have an attachment point. In fact, we've sealed the clay as it turns the corner, and the expansion and contraction will be more even, and it won't weaken or crack at that transition area. Place the end of the coil at the high point of the inside edge of the rim of the pot. Okay. My fingers are ready to roll the coil and displace the clay of the previous coil. The thumb reaches down below the coil of the rim and waits until the fingers move that coil down and in and the clay begins to emerge and as the clay comes out, lift. Replace the coil back on the top edge and begin again. The next move begins on the high point of the previous move. So I'm positioning my thumb on the high point of the previous move underneath the coil of the rim. Fingertips roll the coil into the inside of the pot and press towards the outside as the thumb waits and then lifts. Place the coil back on the top inside edge of the rim and begin again. Fingertips on the crest of the high point, thumb at the high point of the previous move. Roll the coil in, out, and thumb comes up. The position of your wrist low assists your thumb in lifting the clay that is displaced by the coil. Now you can see that I have this a little bit of color area at the bottom, a little bit of shadow area that I need to go back in and seal. So I'm going to use the backs of my fingertips to seal the coils and to minimize any areas that might trap heat or cause cracking or just simply to make the pot easier to clean. I also need to then seal a few of the coils at the height of the wall. So I'll take and again use the back of my fingernails as a rib to seal the coils. All right, this is the point at which the previous coil ended. So I'm going to begin the new coil at that same spot on the inside edge. Thumb, position the thumb first and then the fingertips. Roll the coil inward, lift the wrist and press outward. The clay of the coil, of the new coil, 
displaces the clay of the previous coil. My wrist is low and lifts as I move the coil into the inside of the pot and then out into the wall. And I just seal down with my fingernails. And now I'm moving perpendicular to that seal motions with my thumb. So that nice sweeping motion is just a sealing of the surface. And it could be a little bit of shaping. This would be a good point to stop. Bring this to the edge so you can get your wrist low. Fingertips on the inside edge of the rim and wrist pad under the high point on the outside and come together and lift. Come together and lift. Make sure that what you do on one side of the wall you've done around the entire pot. There we go. That helps refine our shape a little bit. Don't hesitate to come back in at any point and check your coiling, check your wall, make sure it is strong and solid before you add the next piece. Okay. A quick check, stitch in time saves nine. Quick check to make sure that everything is cool. If you're worried about air bubbles, sometimes you need to make sure that you've sealed this um, area between the top coil and the previous coil. Know that the application of the coil is actually a shear move. The fingers are going down and in and the thumbs coming up in opposition to that move, up and forward.